to introduce our presenter for tonight, Tom Schiffer. As I've told some of you, my daughter and his son were in the Boone County High School band together years ago now, I'm sure. But uh, Tommy and his wife, Carol, have been uh, wonderful members of our community for well over 50 years. They've lived right there on Gunpowder Creek. And uh, Tommy has an excellent uh, Vita. Tommy started out as a chemical engineer and worked for a chemical company for years and years. But more interesting than that is that he's had uh, an, a long-standing interest in all kinds of guns, every kind of gun imaginable. He could tell you all about it and probably repair it or uh, re recreate it, whatever. He's held um, offices in various uh, organizations that are centered around guns. And he's also into watercraft. He has, he's a licensed steamboat engineer. How about that? I'd never known anybody who was a licensed steamboat engineer before. But even more interesting to me is the fact that he's an avid researcher and a writer, and he shares the knowledge that he has uh, discovered about the history of our area. He once, we came to one uh, meeting that he had here with friends of Big Moan, and he told all about the War of 1812. He's a walking encyclopedia and a wonderful friend and neighbor. So please help me welcome Tom Schiffer. He's going to be talking about the river. Some of it's true. <laughs> We're going to talk about the 1937 flood tonight, as uh, you might have guessed from the promotional materials that have been circulated. And one thing that I would like to say is that probably people in this room will have some input into what is known uh, about the Boone County history of the 1937 flood. So I'm going to show you a, a few slides as we get started about the general area, about Covington, Cincinnati, Newport. And I want you to know that the 1937 flood was extensively covered by the newspapers, the local newspapers here and all over the country, really. And I was loaned a, uh, an archive of materials, which you will see on that table there, and they belong to the Cincinnati Literary Club and they were found in the basement thereof by a friend of mine who happens to be the uh, secretary of that club. So that's where we got that information. But the Cincinnati newspapers did not know that there was a Boone County, let alone where it was. So we're going to look at some of the things that happened in Boone County, but first we're going to see what happened nationally. Again, the 1937 flood got copious coverage in Cincinnati and other newspapers. We will see some of their coverage in the early part of this presentation. It will give you some small idea of the magnitude of the event. 
Then we will explore things that happened here in Boone County. The Swinky Boys, Russell and Robert, say their dad, Richard, and Uncle Eugene never stopped talking about it. Never in a war they felt like they knew what war was like. And as you'll see in the newspaper headlines, floodwaters bar firemen from big Mill Creek blaze. And it was a big one. At the conclusion of this presentation, you will be given a chance to add to the history of the local flood by recounting the Bloom County history you know from yourselves, your family, and your friends. I might say that I am pretty hard of hearing, and if you have a question or comment at the end, best you come up here and shout it in my ear. <laughs> Okay, we'll look at some of the things that uh, you have seen probably around the Cincinnati area. And uh, the pictures on this slide are the Cincinnati Pool, uh, mile 470 from Pittsburgh. And you will see here what summertime kind of looks like in Rabbit Hash, Kentucky. <coughs> Rabbit Hash, where even the elected officials <laughs> exercise great taste. <laughs> Here we have Big Bone Island on the upper left, Big Bone <coughs> Creek. Again, in the summertime. The one on the lower right is uh, when Lewis and Clark reenactors were here in 2003. Here we have Newport, Covington, and Cincinnati. As you can see, again, summertime. Now we come to Boone County, and here is the 1883 map of Boone County, and you will see Constance, Taylorsport, Lawrenceburg, Petersburg, Aurora, Bellevue, Rising Sun, Rabbit Hash, and Hamilton Landing. In all, there's nearly 40 miles of riverfront for Boone County. Here's a picture from my steamboat of Rabbit Hash. And you can see the store on the left and the barn on the right. The barn, of course, is where the store is situated now. Here again, summertime, Lawfrey Island, a couple of years ago, and U.S. Dam 38 site, which is now private property, as it appeared in 2011 on your right. And winter arrives, and we've got fire and stove at uh, Rabbit Ash, Kentucky. The flood rises 14 plus feet higher than the January 21st forecast in only five days. You can see that it was the stage that they uh, indicated was between <coughs> 65 and 66 feet, and it went to 80 feet, or nearly so. This was a cartoon from the Time Star, or the Inquirer, excuse me, and the weatherman. I know just how you feel. I used to try to guess the horses. <laughs> Downtown Rabbit Ash, and the water is coming up, and Tim Lizzie better get out of here. The ferry boat Mildred comes to Rabbit Ash to save the dry goods from the rising waters threatening the two stores that were there, Craig and Ryle. By this time, my water was the only way out for the the ferry boat Mildred unloading a truck to take stock from
from the stores. <clears throat> Rabbit Hayes General Store behind and above the truck with the water rising. The Ryle Brothers Store is on the right. Here you can see that they predicted a 72-foot crest, and, and you all know that it went to 79.99 feet. Five seen on a house floating down the Ohio River. Elmer Ruhlman, 11, on the left, and his brother Albert, 13, on the right, were the heroes of the Anderson Ferry, of the Anderson Ferry, when they leaped into the Ohio floodwaters, rescuing Shirley Berthine, six years old, shown here with her dog. This was on the Ohio side of the ferry. Water, water everywhere, nor any a drop to drink. This scene was duplicated for hundreds of miles up and down the river, wherever clean water was to be found. Scarcity of clean water is a real health concern during flood time. Schools to close, 38,000 persons homeless, all rain records broken. And here we see a cartoon. It be no school and now sat no Saturday night bath. As my mother would say, tis an ill wind indeed, close no good. River news dominated all the headlines. Much of the rest of the paper was kind of business as usual because of the syndicated columnists and things that they were committed to do. And you would find the, the comics on the comic page just the same as it ever was. The U.S. rushes aid to a day city as flood inches toward 80 feet, and the water situation becomes more acute. <coughs> the city is in the grip of the greatest flood. Snowstorm adds to relief burden. Rivers menace towns in 13 states. Flood routes 4,500 families in northern Kentucky area, and the water threatened to isolate northern Kentucky. A boy, his dog in his arms, and pitifully few belongings salvaged from home behind him. The location is not specified. This scene is repeated in Constance, Rabbit Hash, Hamilton, and elsewhere in Boone County. Here's the Swinky Brothers, Bob and Russell. Any of you, I'm sure, know them. And they live in East Bend and farmers down there. Their father and uncle, Richard and Eugene, Eugene tied their boat off to the front porch during the 1937 flood. You will Hear more about them and their boat later. This is a stripping room that washed up in the 1937 flood, so the Swankies just set it up and stripped tobacco in it for all the years that they raised tobacco. They don't do really that anymore. Okay, here's an aerial view of Cincinnati looking east. Uh, sharp eye will see the crew tower on the upper left and the Union Central building. And you will see the L and N bridge, which is on the upper right corner. That's the Purple People Bridge now. And a sharp eye will see the Island Queen the First, 
moored just below it. That's that little boat you see there. The Licking River, bottom left, with Covington on the left, Newport on the right, Coney Island Steamer, Island Queen number two, stranded between the Central Bridge and the LNN Bridge at the upper right. You see the blue arrow. Notice how much flooding you see in Newport versus Covington. Cincinnati's West End Power Plant, barely keeping its nose above water, making power by moving coal by hand. The I-75 bridge is located just to the right of this plant now, and the building is still there. The I-75 bridge is approximately where you see that blue arrow. Wally Waterman told this bean story as a family tradition. Here the bean story made the papers. Wally saw it from, from his boat as he aided folks in the East End. He evidently did no fishing in the sand traps of the Terrace Park Country Club. You'll notice up there at the top that this there was great fishing in the sand traps on number 10 fairway of the Terrace Park Country Club. But what he told was that there are some strong beans in the East End stored in an all-steel freight car in the Pennsylvania Railroad Yards above Lumpkin Airport. They were soaked by floodwaters. As they swelled, they burst open the top of the freight car. <laughs> The reason the Rabbit Hash General Store is still on its foundation after the 1937 flood is symbolized by the iron rod in Carol Schiffer's left hand, a series of them under the store attached to concrete dead men held it in place. The store, alas, has burned but will be replaced. The rods are still on duty there. As the waters rose, the north-south links shrank. The suspension bridge was the last link. That is, other than a very short rail shutter, shuttle back and forth over the CNO bridge. I doubt seriously that they got past the depot in Covington very far, and in Cincinnati the same way. The bridge, suspension bridge, was open to a stage of 78 feet, or was good to a stage of 78 feet, and so they put a uh, sandbag berm for the uh, vehicles to use on the Kentucky side only. Marie Dennis Elliott was eight years old when the flood threatened her home at 309 Scott Street, Covington. That's just off the lower left-hand edge of this photo. Evacuated by boat, there was no room for her doll, which she was told to leave on the mantle. The flood got the doll and everything <coughs> else was ruined. Marie is retired and living in Florence. At the height of the flood, the suspension bridge was the only link north to south for all 981 miles of the Ohio River. And there on the lower right, you will see a car on the ramp with the pier of the suspension bridge in the background. And at the lower left, you will see an aerial view of that ramp, which is in the kind of a quarter circle there. And you can see from the top picture that uh, the floodwaters were pretty high on the bridge. CG&E had trouble making power. Coal had to be moved to boilers by hand. Domestic customers were limited to one bulb 
had one radio for the duration. During the flood time, that would be you, whether you were flooded or not. Changing shifts at Columbia Park Power Plant, CGME. Note the rain gear on workers in miserable working conditions. I also note that there's a very fancy power boat that probably belonged to one of the executives there, and I'll bet he's worried about it getting nicked up. There, Grandpappy, that ought to stop you for keeps. The river passes all-time high. Grandpap talked about the 19, or 1884 flood, which was previously the biggest. No longer having to listen to Gramps tell of the great flood of 1884, which the peak of which you see, the tip of the red arrow, the 1937 flood, when you see the tip of the blue arrow, uh, dwarfed it in comparison. And it was not only a deeper flood, but it lasted far longer. Friends Jack and Asa Rouse report that they were in the second and first grades in Walton, Kentucky during the flood. They helped prepare the school to house refugees from Louisville, but it was not used. John Stevenson used the new Walton fire pumper to fill their elevated tank during the power outage, and Walton had city water throughout the flood. They too had to listen to the tales of the biggest flood until our grandfather, Merritt Jack, saw the devastation of the 37 flood. Flood waters carry a tremendous burden of soil, is held in suspension where the velocity is great. Inside or amongst houses or in backwaters, the waters are quiescent and there they deposit their burden of mud. St. Elizabeth Hospital bedlam, flapping in the breeze, at Hebron School. And here are the ladies who washed them. <coughs> the Florence Christian Church was also involved in the effort to supply clean women to St. Elizabeth Hospital. The author is given to wonder where they got enough clean water to do that. <coughs> Here we see the angry waters roiling just below the deck of the suspension bridge. No <coughs> steamboat could pass below any bridge across the river during the flood. Lucy, Carol's mother, walked over the suspension bridge twice daily during the flood with the angry waters swirling just below the deck. Here was a drama in Boone County that I have never seen chronicled before. A couple and their 16-year-old daughter were seen on the roof of a house floating past Cincinnati. In the dead of night, two men from Addiston in a motorboat got noticed by radio and intercepted and ran them down some miles downriver. Rescued, they were nearly dead from exposure. Further details are lost in the chaos of those perilous times. The author's brother George, then age seven, remembers seeing the temporary ramp to the suspension bridge and remembering that they had to boil water before using it for drinking or cooking. My mother told me I saw the flood too, but don't remember much as I was not quite two years old. Here you see G.P. Schiffer Jr. and Dog Tink steamboating on the Ohio River with the suspension bridge in the background. 
as Yogi said, it ain't over till it's over. You can see that the river falls one foot in 24 hours. Water stations opened at the schools. But Louisville by then was grunting, bearing the brunt of high water by now. The results of that flood lasted for many, many years, and some of the results are with us yet. A floating house caught on the first pier of the Louisville and Nashville, Nashville Railway Bridge on the Cincinnati side yesterday, necessitating much work before it could be broken up and floated down on down the river. Uh, that's the Purple People Bridge now. Lawrenceburg, half of the 11,000 residents flee to higher ground as the river pours through the recently completed river wall. The roar of the water was cut off as the floodwaters reached the pumps. There you can see what Lawrenceburg, Indiana looks like. This is a U.S. Corps of Engineers photo. The gasoline boat running between Petersburg and Lawrenceburg, that's a ferry, carried 71 passengers during one day. That's a fairly good for one day's work. River is rising rapidly at this riding. Now that was from the Boone County Recorder, January 14th. Many Lawrenceburg people fled across the river to relatives and friends in Petersburg, Kentucky. Petersburg and Bellevue did not flood during this event. Petersburg Lawrenceburg Ferry stayed quite busy during the flood. Not discovered until well after the waters receded, we see this. On March 4, 1937, a man's body is found buried under debris in churchyard at Lawrenceburg. The only person reported missing there during the flood. It was George Powell, swept away when the levee broke. He is survived by four children. Jim Crawford has lived in Bend County all his life has had a relationship with the river too. Jim is the son of Ellis Crawford of the Barringer Crawford Museum in Duluth Park. Descended from river people, he has come to know the river is likely to get the last word on any project that comes within its reach. He has had any number of projects he initiated on the banks of the river, swept away or buried in mud or mess. Don and Patsy McGuire of Petersburg remember seeing the flood as small children. Don lived near Boulder Creek, and Patsy in Hebron. As a teenager, Don lived in the Jacobs Hyatt House as the son of the telephone farmer there. Only one road, the Dixie Highway, connecting northern Kentucky with the rest of the state last night. Only way out of Covington was over 19th Street and up Highland, Kyle's Lane to South Hills, now Fort Wright. Pike Street was flooded where I-75 is now, where it crosses Pike Street. That's Willow Run. Covington Ballpark was located there in 1937. U.S. 25 from Cobbs Lane was open south to Lexington. U.S. 42 was flooded toward Louisville, both at Warsaw and Carrollton. You would get to Louisville via Lexington. Lincoln, Cincinnati's municipal airport then, had Union Levee, which is Beachmont Avenue today, to protect it from flooding. On January 22, 1937, the waters overtopped the levee and the airport was flooded under many feet of water. 
resident aircrafts were flown out just ahead of the water. Here again we see an aerial view of uh, Cincinnati. You will see lower right is Newport, Covington, to the left, center left, and you will notice uh, Willow Run coming in is where the uh, interstate bridge is located now. And across the river with the red arrow is the West End Power Plant. And again, that building is still there. You can see the c Bridge, the Suspension Bridge, the 4th Street Bridge, and 12th Street Bridge, bridges at, on the uh, Licking River. Here we have a picture of Constance looking across the river. The town of Constance was undoubtedly the hardest hit of all in Boone County. Houses were twisted from their foundations and many have been completely destroyed or swept away with the high water. All buildings that were situated on or near the main highway, Route 8, in Constance and Taylorsport were almost completely covered with water ranging in depth from 5 to 15 feet. The residents who remain there are making their living quarters in the school building. They have been cared for by the Red Cross and, the local, and local donations. It will be several days yet before the river falls sufficiently for more, much cleanup to be done. Here's the Cottonmar House at the uh, Anderson Ferry. Men were discovered on the roofs in an aerial photograph. They didn't know they were there until they printed the picture and saw them, and then they had to send boats back, presumably, to, to pick them up. The late Captain Alan Bates grew up in Louisville. He remembered the flood quite vividly and reported the flood stretching from Churchill down to far into southern Indiana, to Sellersburg, Indiana. I measured that as 15 miles. He remembered police from Philadelphia were sent to Louisville to maintain order. During the evening of January 21st, it rained intensely and the Ohio River rose an unprecedented seven and a half feet during the next 18 hours. And that's from Lehman and Clark, their book, The Green Line. This is a lot more water than a seven and a half foot rise and the river stays within its bank and pool. It takes a half pint of water to fill a water glass seven and a half inches deep, but many gallons to fill a bathtub seven and a half inches deep. Bob Feldhouse saw the flood from the vantage point of the hill where the entrance to Potter's Ranch is now. Chicken houses with the unfortunate chickens on the roof awaiting the end of their journey down the river and the building where the Rabbit Hash Historical Society now stands being swept away. Sort of a box score. Note that poor little Boone County did not make the cut. The only newspaper that seemed to know where Boone County was was the Boone County Recorder. Now get this, 4,000 families driven out of Covington and Ludlow and Bromley. But in Campbell County, 6,000 families were dis destitute in Newport. 1,000 in the rest of the county. So you can see they were harder hit than Covington. Mason, that's Mason County, 700 families home, homeless in Maysville. Supplies coming in from Lexington, in Brockton County, 400 families homeless in, us, in Augusta, and in Greenup, 2,000 families out in Russell. In 
1937, Amory's plant was flooded past waist deep, but the candle production was on the second floor. This was seven miles north of the river in the Mill Creek Valley. Here you can see an aerial flood, a view of the flood, and that's Mill Creek flowing right to left through the center. You'll see Emory under the red arrow and Procter and Gamble across the railroad track. Reason I happen to know this, I worked there, but not during the 37 flood. <laughs> River Downs may soon be down the river. <laughs> and this was a cartoon in the uh, Enquirer. The bleachers from River Downs, Coney Island, washed up here 46.2 river miles later in George Stevens uh, Field. That's uh, around 338 to Rabbit Hash to the right. Bruce Ferguson, Steamboating on Big Bone Creek, October 1914, 2014. <laughs> Asa Rouse peeping around the smokestack. Bruce Ferguson's mother took him to Covington to see the flood. He reported seeing houses floating down the Licking River and the devastation seen from the suspension bridge. He was also taken to see the damage at Rabbit Hash and the Hamilton. According to C.L. Cropper, chairman of the Red Cross in Boone County, there are approximately 150 persons being housed and fed in the county at the present time. Most are being kept in the public school building. The average cost per day of this project is approximately $50 a day. All Boone County residents should use electric current sparingly as there is only a certain amount in the lines at this time. And that's from the Boone County Recorder. Bellevue, we wish to extend through the Boone County Recorder our heartfelt sympathy to our relatives and friends along the Ohio River who have lost their home and contents by the flood. Charles Sanford and family, since they were forced to vacate their home in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, <coughs> on account of high water. Mr. and Mrs. Elmer Rice are with relatives here since they were forced from their homes in Newport on account of the raging Ohio. Hamilton School, Water was four inches on the basketball goal boards, almost in the second floor. Here we see a photo of Hamilton High School, and you'll see how high the water came. The Slinky Boy's father and uncle took Mr. Hubbard into their boat out of the second story window of this Riddles Run house in 1937. Hubbard was ill at the time with pneumonia. You'll see the blue arrow on the window he was undoubtedly removed from. Richard and Eugene Schwenke's John Boat entered the Hamilton School's gymnasium and they took the piano off the stage. They then floated it around to the steps in front and took it up to the second floor out of the flood. They also took loads of rock to put on the roofs of flooded outbuildings to keep them from floating away. This for Bob and Russell Schwenke. Omer Schenkel is helping repair the auditorium in the Hamilton High School. <clears throat> Here's the Constance Christian Church. Fire causes a million five hundred thousand dollars damage. Fire adds to the suffering of Cincinnati flood area as live wire falls into a bursted 
gasoline tank Sunday. Flames reached 300 feet in the air. Untold millions of damage wrought by fire and water. Hard to publish news uh, paper without electric. Last week we made an effort to publish a paper without the help of electricity. We were without electricity from Sunday night to Friday of last week, and our small job press was operated by a gasoline engine. I would love to see that issue. It uh, is not in the University of Kentucky Archi archives or the archives here. F.H. Seabree Bar floated away. House floated away from foundation. Garage and other outbuildings floating. Stock turned out on hill, hill land in the weather. D.E. Ogden, water high on the first floor home. Other losses, L.N. Moore, water in barn and first floor home. Outbuildings floating. Here we see a photo of Constance, Kentucky. Rabbit hash. The river is falling slowly since the flood. Those who have moved back to their homes are Eugene Wingate and wife, B.W. Clore and family. Those who have not moved are F.L. Scott and wife, staying at Charles Bachelor's, Albert Clore and wife, and Robert Wilson's. Wilson Connor at the Gaines Place, Russell Stevens and family at Robert Wilson's Theater. Okay, here you can see the flood level in Rabbit Hash. And there is a marker on the one building there, which you see above to the right. And uh, it's, it's still there. And if you project that line across, you see that the uh, general store barely has its roof sticking out of it. And I assume it did stick out, but I don't know. Okay, topsy-turvy. This is a scene from upriver in New Richmond, Ohio. This is topsy-turvy in rabbit hay. This is the building, I assume, where that flood level is recorded in that other view. This building was salvaged. Robert Hash continues. Denzel Connor at Vernon Stevens. Jerome Wilson is living in a one-room house in his yard. R.T. Stevens and daughter are living in two rooms of John Palmer's residence. Paul Abram and family are in the doctor's office, Mr. The, Mr. Palmer owns. Charles Craig and family are now home after being with Mr. Frank Ulrich and wife for several weeks. All these are from the Boone County Recorder. Hamilton, floodwaters are receding, leaving the roads full of drift and mud and many vacant places where homes, warehouses, and other buildings once stood. Mr. and Mrs. S. Burry's new home, Mr. and Mrs. G. L. Pitcher, Mr. and Mrs. Ed Abden, these three houses were washed away. Lower gunpowder, Mr. and Mrs. J.R. Huey rented rooms of J.L. Jones, their house having been wrecked. Here's Hamilton looking up Landing Creek, also known as Little Gunpowder Creek. The river is on the left. There's Mike Fletcher's house in Hamilton, and it shows what the flood level was in 1937. It washed the lean-to kitchen behind away and uh, twisted the house on the foundation. Uh, flood, 
Excuse me. Back. I want to get a picture. That's Uncle Blue's house, too. The what? Uncle Blue Adam's house. It is. It is Blue Fountain. Back, back. so she had a picture of the mm -hmm. If you can. Can you move it back one frame? That a boy, thank you. Mm -hmm. I took a picture of it recently when I came across Rock Road. It's amazing that thing has withstood a lot of things. Man. Flood losses in the Hamilton community. The flood losses to farm property in the Hamilton community probably rank highest of any community in Boone County. Now notice they said farm property. Following is a brief summary. Richard Schwenke, 1,700 bushels of corn, one ton of hay covered by river water with damage to barns, fences, and other equipment. Mike and Ed Bender, 1,300 bushels of corn and water, 10 tons of hay, house, garage, and other buildings floating, other damage. This is a view of Hamilton, and this is a view of Tom Huff's general store taken well after the flood. That building is no longer there. So you can see the Hamilton light is at River Mile 514.8, is still at that location. And uh, there was a boathouse at that time owned by Herb Rawson at that location. Here we see it from the river. And again, they, that's Blue Fathom's house on the, on the right the red, red roof. And you see Tom, Tom Huff's general store was there in 1937. This photo was taken when uh, Mike Fletcher was part of the 80's Navy and uh, working for John. Tom Huff has been cleaning out his store, fixing the floor and counters which were damaged by the flood. His home is badly damaged, having left its foundation and washed over to the next yard. He is making his home in his son's residence. William Huff Jr.'s home was badly damaged, but they are living in the upstairs. Fire destroys the Tri-State Tobacco Warehouse Company. Okay, this is the Tom Huff General Store. Uh, as it appeared on Rye Road uh, in later years. You will see what the flood level was in 1937. This picture was uh, courtesy of Mike Fletcher, who uh, later owned that building, and uh, that's when it was raised. As the flood rose, city water supply was cut off. The natural gas supply was curtailed. Electric service, where still supplied, was restricted to one light bulb and one radio. Boone County Recorder lost power and used a gasoline engine to run their press. Potable water was to be boiled before use. Long lines waited to get water at natural springs. Water was cold and wet, was, uh, the weather was cold and wet with snow and rain. Here we got uh, Hamilton again, and if you look carefully behind that tree in the center, you will see a roof sticking up. Winfield Cottage, where East Bend Power Plant is now, was threatened by the flood. The furniture was moved to the attic, and according to Ron Buckley, barely escaped the flood as it rose to the attic floor. The barn was flooded, too, to the top of the door. This is, of course, gone now. That's where the uh, East Bend Power Plant is today. Boone County furnishes natural gas to Florence, Erlanger, and Covington during recent flood. Other supply cut off. 
Gas has been flowing into the mains in Florence for several weeks, according to Mr. McCurdy. And when the gas was shut off from the main lines in Cincinnati, the wells, which were drilled by the Boone County Well Drilling Company, never faltered but supplied the demand with pressure remaining high at all times. At this time, there are 28 natural gas wells in Boone County and two more in the process of drilling. With all these wells connected to the main line in Florence, it's believed that enough gas could be furnished to supply the demand of Cincinnati and its outlying suburbs. Don't know what happened to that project, but I never heard of it. Constance, we're looking toward Ohio. Another picture of Constance. Flood hay is dangerous. Farmers who had hay in barns flooded by water are warned to watch it closely on account of spontaneous combustion. Reports of hay mouth fires are coming in to the U.S. Department of Agriculture as flood waters recede. Survey shows her loss to the county exceeds $250,000. By a select committee of reliable farmers and businessmen, that's $150,000 more than predicted a few weeks ago. The river at Paducah yields seven bodies, bringing the total there to 51 persons. Many wild stories are told. Men driving a herd of cattle down the river in an outward motorboat. Snakes driving refugees from buildings. Snakes in cold rain and snow of January. <laughs> Everything so. <laughs> While some of these stories no doubt were true, it was impossible for us to check them, hence they went unprinted. This again from the Boone County Recorder. U.S. Dam 38 faces danger as raging floodwaters recede. Almost directly in front of the powerhouse, what used to be a beautiful declivity to the water's edge is approximately half gone. At several points, streams of water as large as a man's body were pouring from underground. No more serious slippage at Dam 38, and work has started on repairs. Again, Boone County Recorder. Farmers reporting sinking places in their land. Estimate number of farmers suffering flood damage, 215. Quantity of hay destroyed by the flood, 715 tons. Corn, 14,300 bushels. Other feed, 1,500 tons. Acres of small grain, including small grain pastures, destroyed or seriously injured, 500. This is a redundant picture of Hamilton with the roof sticking up behind the tree. Number of livestock restored, Poultry 600, number of farm drawings destroyed, 30, value $30,000. Number of other farm buildings destroyed, 75, value $35,000. Number of farm dwellings damaged, 200, amount of damage, $20,000. Number of other farm buildings damaged, 125, that's value $8,000. Damage to land from excessive erosion, deposit of silt and gravel, 3,000 acres. Other not covered by the above, $75,000. Number of farmers who will need loans, 115. Here we go back to constancy again. Riddles Run, Len Hubbard, pneumonia, moved out of house as waters almost reached second floor. Corn crib and other buildings floating. 25 tons of hay, 700 bushels of corn, 75 chickens, 250 shops of corn and other equipment lost. John Setter's house, furniture and chickens washed away. 
150 bushels of corn lost. Reuben Kirtley, barn floating. Barn lost. Considerable feed and equipment lost. Ralph Feldhouse, barn on second floor of house. Loss of feed and equipment. R.E. Watt, Ryle. House floated down past the creek. Doesn't say if he got it back. Miller <laughs> and Hill Barn, tools and equipment washed down to Curtley's. Miller Store, selling provisions by boat out of the second story window. <laughs> J.L. Jones, hay and feed loss. That's at Normansville. Professor Reuben Asbury House washed away. Professor Garland Huff, water almost in second floor of home. Tom Huff store floating, house floating, selling goods on side sill beside the river. Fifteen and fourteen hundred dollars worth of goods damaged. There is the Miller General Store at uh, Normansville that he did business from the second story window during the flood. That building burned a couple of years ago. That picture was taken about no more than a day or two before the fire. Casper, the homes of Mr. and Mrs. Albert Kittle, Mr. and Mrs. Amber Klopp, and Mr. and Mrs. Herbert Brady, and Mr. and Mrs. Annis Nixon were taken away by the high water. The barns of John Klopp and Hubert Brady and several buildings for Henry Klopp, Klopp. Hubert Brady and J.W. Grant were destroyed. Mr. and Mrs. Stanley Smith were with Mr. and Mrs. Hugh Baker during the flood. Author's note, I don't know where Gasberg was. It may have been near the Aurora Ferry, judging by the names. Authorities estimated the mainstream current in the floodwaters may have raced to the sea as being 10 to 15 miles an hour. There's a homemade boat. This boy came down from Maysville to Madison, Indiana. Can you imagine doing that in the middle of a flood? I hope they were glad to see him. <laughs> Nationally, by the time the flood passed, the flood had killed hundreds of people, buried a thousand towns, and left a million people homeless. Some of these communities never came back, at least in any recognizable form, form and all of them were children. <coughs> That's from David Walkie's The Thousand Year Flood. As we approach the end of the narration, the next slide shows some of the many who contributed to the story of the Boone County Flood. Special thanks to Mike Fletcher of Hamilton, Gunpowder Creek, an honored member of John Beatty's Navy. Mike is the go-to guy for all things river related and the first person contacted when writing this. Dale Flick, secretary of the Cincinnati Literary Club who furnished all of the newspaper show. Donnie Clare of the Rabbit Hash Historical Society who furnished the flood pictures that you see here below. Steve and Betsy Conrad of the Boone County Historical Society. It was Steve who introduced the author to the wonders and frustrations <laughs> of the PowerPoint presentations. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> The lion's share of thanks go to Bridges Stryker of the local history department who commissioned this study and provided resources. Keep in mind that this is just the barest tip of the iceberg of the story. Each of these people has a story to tell and a much larger narration is available at the Boone County Public Library online. Look for the big flood in Boone County, Kentucky. Here's a picture.
picture of some of the people. Bob Swinky, Bruce Ferguson, Mike Fletcher, Phil Schiffer, Russell Swinky, and the Bridget Stryker. Lucy Friedel Wasson, my mother-in-law, Kelly Fulmer, Marie Elliott, Nancy Schiffer, my mother, Juanita Munger, who has passed away, Bob Feldhouse, Jim Crawford, Randy Cochran, Terry Mark Spirit, Asa Rouse, Ron Buckley, Jack Rouse, Patsy and Don McGuire, Carol Lawson Schiffer, my wife, and Captain Alan Bates. Here's the front page of the Enquirer, January 26, at the height of the flood. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the story. Thanks.